Okay. Welcome. Today is our move into stillness meeting. And uh, so uh, we'll just note that um, we're going to do, if, if possible, uh, we're going to do some exploration today lying down on our backs. If that's not possible for you, then uh, you needn't do that and you can uh, modify uh, to whatever posture work, does work for you. But if you can lie on your back, then we'll be doing that. So you'll want to have a location where you can do that. Um, the ideal is uh, firm and flat and uh, not too firm. We want it, to, it's, it depends on you what, what would be too firm, but we want to find that balance because if it's too soft, um, then we don't feel as much. And so we want to feel as much as possible without it being painful or uh, strenuous or overwhelming. So we want to find the right balance where, and that's going to be different for every person. So. Um, for some people, it'll be fine to lie directly on a hardwood floor. Uh, for some people, that would be terrible. And so then you find the appropriate amount of padding. So it could be a carpeted floor. Uh, you, could, you could lie on a rug. You could use a yoga mat. You could, uh, you know, combine those things. Or um, if necessary, you can do it on a in bed you know for most people most of the time bed would be too soft and we wouldn't get enough sensation but sometimes that's just appropriate so with those uh, guidelines in mind you see what you can do okay and we'll if you want to go ahead and move to that now then you're welcome to do so um but i'm going to take a moment before doing that so uh, we want to get clear on what is the intention, what are we doing here? So the, um, these explorations are, the intention of the exploration is that uh, it helps us to discover the, well, the word somatic is based on soma, and there are many notions of what that is, but here we're understanding it, or the intention is that it's this, um, we'll say interface, we, to give a name to it, between body and spirit. Okay, so it is uh, not quite physical, but it's not quite in, entirely non-physical. It's this subtle interface, uh, the awareness of, um, where we're just in between, in a sense. So we have uh, an aware, an expanded awareness, in a sense, but it's not without bodily awareness. But the expanded awareness allows us to begin to understand or experience or perceive what we normally conceive of as bodily experience as a more truthful, more open, uh, sensory perception or even non-sensory perception, however you want to understand it. But we start to understand uh, these sensations really more in terms of energy or in terms of uh, just pure sensation rather than the conceptualization, oh, that's my hip or oh, that's my neck or that's my hand. We start there because that's where we're normally, that's our kind of normal waking state of consciousness is this uh, fixation on the mental overlay. So we have an overlay and we're filtering everything through that, but it's really an unnecessary burden. And it, you'll, as we, most of us know, that doesn't provide us with satisfactory results. Um, so the benefits that you can expect through these explorations are many. Um, 
because it works on every level. So uh, it will help physically. It will help to uh, release patterns of uh, armoring intention so that we can start to have a greater sense of ease and freedom in our movements and just being uh, in, embodied. And um, it also helps at other levels at a, we could consult, call it a uh, spiritual level, at a mental level, at an emotional level, uh, at all of these levels, because it helps in a similar way, it helps to soften or release the habits of contraction, the habits of uh, fixation. So it gives us greater ease and range of uh, expression. And the primary vehicle for this is awareness. So the most of the time when we approach any kind of movement, uh, because of our habit, because of the conditioning, because of the dominant model uh, in the world, in the culture, uh, we tend to go to that mental fixation. So there's a model that we're referring to and we're trying to fix something. And of course, every time we're trying to fix something, what we're doing is more effort, more contraction. So here, what we're doing is we're we are moving, there's movement involved, obviously, but the important thing is that this movement is uh, really just the vehicle through which we are discovering. So um, if you're making, if the movement is mechanical, you miss 99% of the benefits. The movement is to be, uh, for you to be a, a, a kind of a focus of your awareness to help you to become aware of the pure sensation. And as you become aware of that pure sensation, you start to notice where there's unnecessary effort being made. So these are just important points that I mention often, but it's really helpful to repeat them. Even So even though you might think, oh, I've heard this before, why the preliminary nonsense? Actually, this is, <laughs> the, this is most of it, you see because it, it, this is about the, the, to get the real benefits, these principles are what have to guide everything. Because as I've said, if you just do the movement mechanically, you'll miss 99% of the benefits at least. So it, the, the real focus should be on the quality of the experience, the starting to tune into the pure sensation and just noticing where there's gripping, where there's unnecessary effort, where there's discomfort, and then noticing the tendency to go to a mental model of naming the location and the part. And then there's a whole idea, uh, a concept that's already imprinted, impressed upon the system that is how we try and remedy that but it doesn't work. We have to see that that's never worked. In fact, all it does is reinforce the very same thing. So everything that we habitually do through our mental model, through our habit, trying to fix the problem is in fact the problem. This makes an enormous amount of sense when you have the experience. Prior to the experience, it makes no sense at all, but, you, but I'm saying it so that it will be there as a, just in the background so that when the experience occurs, you'll realize, ah, yes, this is it. So you'll notice that you'll notice that you're just unconsciously, habitually doing the same things, trying to unconsciously fix the problem. And you're not, by virtue of the fact that it's unconscious, you're by definition, not aware of it consciously, but through this process, you become aware of it and then this light bulb goes on and you realize, ah, stop doing that. And then all of a sudden you open to all of this sensation that you had been trying to keep at bay unconsciously. So there's emotion involved, there's memory involved, all of these things come to the surface, thoughts, beliefs. So we're aware, we release, we open, we surrender, and 
we discover through this that there's a an easing into uh, an expanded possibility. Okay, so as I said, we're going to start uh, today lying on the back. So let's go ahead and do that. And for those who came in a little bit late, if you missed it, if you're if that's not going to work for you if for whatever reason, you can't lie on the back, then you make you can modify, you know, this, you'll still get value, even if you're sitting up, but you might just have to make some modifications. So let's see that I did not sweep today. <laughs> and uh, so lie on your back and bring your, your feet, the soles of your feet to the, to the floor or the surface that you're on. So your knees are bent and your feet should be a comfortable distance from your buttocks. So, you know, don't tr try and force them in as close as you can. That would be uncomfortable. But if they're too far away, then that's also not going to be comfortable. So find the right distance from the buttocks for you so that it feels stable and comfortable. Just bothers me a little bit <laughs> to see just my head cut off. I don't know, it's a little bit weird. So there we go. So we'll, um, you can have your hands either resting at your sides or on your belly, whatever is more comfortable for you. And then take a moment to really get comfortable, as comfortable as possible here. Now, if you need something under the head, sometimes it's uncomfortable for people to um, have the head resting at the same level as the back. So if that's you, then you can place something under the head. Um, we're not going to, um, if you need to use a pillow, a pillow would be acceptable, but ideally uh, it's something that's firmer than that so that you can still be aware of the sensation at the back of the head because part of what we're going to be exploring today is this full uh, connection of the whole body, the head to the pelvis and so forth. And so ideally we wanna be able to feel that. Um, so like a, a paperback book or a stack of paperback books is often a good option. And I know that might mean getting up and getting those props, but, uh, and I'll, you know, you can always, as I said, if a pillow is, is all that's available, you just use the pillow, that's okay. But don't have the head any higher than it needs to be. Okay, just, as, just elevate it as much as is necessary in order to feel supported and comfortable. Now, um, again, be aware of the legs and the feet. So you want to minimize any strain. So you might uh, play around a little bit with the width of the feet. Um, the, if they're too narrow, you'll find that that's going to probably introduce unnecessary strain. And if they're too wide, maybe that would also introduce unnecessary strain, but you can find the right width. And then feel the knees connected to the, the tops of the femurs where they're inserting into the, to the pelvis so that you can feel that weight of the thigh all the way from the knee descending down and resting so that you're not making unnecessary effort trying to tense up the thighs. And likewise, from the knees down the uh, lower legs to the feet, feel that that also is, all that energy is descending down to the feet so that the, there's not this upward pulling uh, toward the knees, but rather everything is surrendered downward. Okay, and now we're going to start to be, as we often do, we're going to become aware of the breath. 
So just tune into the breath. And as we often do, we notice that there's these four phases of breath. So there's the inhalation, the transition, the exhalation, and the transition. So be aware just of those phases and the cyclical nature of that. So round and round it goes and just be tuned into that and don't try to change anything. Just notice it happening. And then of course, through the awareness, it will start to change. So we're not trying to resist the change, but we're not trying to force any change. We're just open to the change that happens naturally through awareness. And today, because we're lying on the back, the sensation of breathing is different. And we can be aware of things that we would not normally be aware of in other uh, postures. So notice, for example, what is the... Um, state of your lower back. And you could even put, a, if you can, if it's strenuous, don't do so, but you could even take a hand and see if, if can you slide it under the lower back? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Maybe you have an idea of what is better, what should be the case, and just be willing to be open to discovering what is and don't try and correct anything and just drop all the judgments and opinions about what should be. Just find out what is. And so then start, and then you can take the hand away and just put it back to wherever is comfortable. So now you have that a little bit more awareness of the lower back. And then start to notice the connection between the breath and the lower back. So as you inhale, how does that change your sensation or awareness of the lower back? And similarly, as you exhale, well, how does that change your awareness of the lower back? So just notice that without there having to be a right answer. It's not about a right, a right answer. It's just about noticing. Now, let's become aware of the inhalations in particular. So, of course, we're still aware of all of the breath, and there's still the entire cycle happening. So there's, we're not stopping anything, but just on each inhalation, be particularly conscious and start to have an intention that the inhalation can be uh, satisfying and non-strenuous and also elongated as much as possible without introducing strain. So what that means is really that we have to release wherever there's habitual resistance or tension that we're now becoming aware of. So you inhale and at that point where you would mechanically make the transition to the exhalation, just slow down and see what can you soften and release so that maybe you find that the inhalation can extend a little bit more, be a little bit more expansive without strain. And 
and I'll, of course, we want to be aware of the entire self throughout this, but I'll also point out some areas to be uh, particularly aware of, just in case, because sometimes what happens is we just are so numb and forgetful. Uh, Thomas Hanna calls it uh, sensory motor amnesia that these areas are just sort of blanks in our awareness. But if we intentionally bring attention there, then magically something starts to open up. So you could even, if it's comfortable for you, you could place your hands on the lower ribs. So it's like your thumbs are kind of resting on the lower ribs or just above the lower ribs and then the your other fingers are just below that on the abdomen, on the soft tissue. And just have awareness of this area where the, the ribs and the, the abdomen meet. So this is a area that we often are holding a lot of tension. So just see, can you, just through attention and intention and awareness, can you just bit by bit allow this to soften and release so that, of course, there's bone there, where there's bone. The ribs involve bone, but are you really clear on exactly what's bone and what's not? And usually we're not. So we want to start to allow that to become clear. And it's a process that takes patience and gentleness. But this will really help you to start to discover where the, the resistance and tension and armoring is in this area. So again, on the inhalation, each inhalation, we're allowing that to extend or elongate as much as possible without strain. So you're now with the hands placed here, if that's comfortable at least, then you start to help yourself become aware of where you're holding this unconscious tension, rigidity. And at that point where you would habitually turn the breath around, you just start to soften and release that tension and you find that the inhalation extends a little bit more without strain. You might find that the way in which you're breathing changes, the shape of the breath in the body, the movement itself starts to change and just allow that. So what's happening in that case is there's a, this mechanical mental model that we've been referring to. And now that's being exposed because we're coming in direct contact with reality. And there's a mismatch between the model and the reality. So we're allowing reality which we're allowing that reality to be the um, guiding truth in this process, which means we just have to keep surrendering and softening our uh, compulsion to assert those habits from the mental model. Okay, now, oh, one more thing about this, which is notice that when I say that the inhalation can elongate or extend, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're taking in more air. So that's an important point. It could be that the breath just becomes subtler, it slows down, becomes gentler. 
And so the process of the inhalation becomes elongated, but it doesn't necessarily mean there's a bigger breath. Okay, so now we're aware of a lot and we're gonna to add to that, which is that we're going to be also now um, aware of the pelvic floor. So there's a thoracic diaphragm, which is this uh, dome-shaped muscle that's interior and our hand, if you've been placing your hands where I've suggested your hands are in, in that location of where that thoracic diaphragm attaches at the front of the body. So we have awareness somewhat of that region of the thoracic diaphragm. And then there's a, a, another diaphragm in the, at the pelvic floor. And this pelvic floor diaphragm and the thoracic diaphragm have a relationship. And usually we're not very sensitive to the um, diaphragm, well, either, but to the diaphragm at the pelvic floor. But what we can start to do through this practice is we can become more sensitive to that. So start to notice, uh, and just in case it's not clear, when I say the pelvic floor, I'm talking about the area, you'll, you'll notice it most pronouncedly at the most likely around the perineum. So that area between the genitals and the anus. Uh, you can just bring your attention gently there. And now each time you're inhaling, see if you can be aware of that area at the pelvic floor and notice if there's a habit of holding tension and rigidity there and start to just soften that. Now, at first, it might not be clear. Be again, because of that, that numbness, that sensory motor amnesia, but there's a magic that happens just through the intention and attention. You start to become aware of it. You're opening to it. So you start to notice it. And then you'll really start to feel it. You'll feel it's very subtle at first, but you'll start to feel that there's a flow and a rhythm that as the thoracic diaphragm moves, it descends as we inhale. And so too, that pelvic floor diaphragm needs to be able to soften and descend, expand outward and downward. Okay, so now we've been cultivating awareness of a, a great deal. So if you really consider now what you're aware of compared to when we first started, it's a lot. So we want to acknowledge that. And um, if this is more than enough for you, definitely, if it's more than enough, then ease up and do less. But if, it's, if this is enough, don't feel pressured to doing anything more. So be honor yourself and be gentle. For those who would like to explore a little bit more, we're gonna see if we can maintain all of that awareness, which again is a lot. And we're gonna add a little bit of movement of the pelvis. So you can just become aware of your pelvis to start and Often we don't really have a very good, clear sense of our pelvis. So you might 
find that being aware of your pelvis is a little bit challenging if you don't have a clear sense of it already. And if that's the case, then that's fine. That's we all start there. So don't don't uh, despair. It's it's fine. That's you you you're in the you're doing it correctly. And if you find it helpful, you can place your hands there on the pelvis. So there are these um, uh, crests of the pelvis that are we usually maybe think of them as the hip bones, and you can maybe feel them with your hands. So you can maybe see that I'm putting my hands here on those uh, crests. They're called the iliac crests. And so you can kind of wrap your thumbs around the back and you can feel that they, they really rise up quite high. And uh, they you can feel the protrusions in the front, maybe, it depends. So if you're have an enormous amount of tension there, which most of us do, then you'll have maybe a hard time feeling this. And that's, again, where many of us start. So if that's, if you're feeling around there and you say, I don't know, I have no idea what's what here, that's okay. But some, some of us may be able to feel these crests and you can feel the protrusions in the front and you can feel how it wraps around the back. So you just now have awareness of that. Okay. That's a good starting point. And be aware that your spine connects to the pelvis. So the pelvis is on the, you, if you're feeling these crests on the two sides, you notice there's a right side and a left side. And so the pelvis is composed of these two sides. They're, he, they're called hemi pelvises and they're fused together with the um with the, the lower part of the spine so you can then start to have this awareness that there's kind of a there's a fairly substantial surface there on the back side where the spine and the two hemipelvises are fused together, forming this one big structure. So this is a very powerful structure, very powerful part of the body. And just having awareness of it, cultivating that awareness helps enormously with so many things. You might even notice that just by having awareness of it, just by bringing awareness to it already, you can feel that there's things, some things releasing and softening. Maybe things are changing a little bit. Okay, so now we have this awareness that the pelvis and the spine are connected. So what does this mean? It means that when the pelvis moves, the spine moves. So we want to have that awareness. And in fact, that it's the, in a sense, it is that the movement of the spine is the movement of the pelvis. So when the spine moves, the pelvis moves. So now, again, only, this is only for those who are comfortable doing so, but, um, and if, if not, then just continuing to have the awareness of the breath is very, very powerful and, and, uh, and healing. So don't, make the mistake of thinking that you must do more. But for those who would like to, then what we're going to do next is we're going to uh, begin to gently roll the pelvis. And you don't need to do it yet. I'm going to give the instruction. But now that you have this awareness of this backside of the pelvis, you can start to have a sense that it could move in many directions, but we're going to specifically explore uh, rolling the pelvis forward and back, forward and back relative to our uh, perspective from the head, meaning that like it, it will roll, um, it, it would, technically it's called, an, um, this would be an anterior tilt of the pelvis. So we're going to intentionally anteriorly tilt the pelvis, but it's going to be rolling on the surface that we're on. So you're going to 
in order to achieve this, what's going to happen is you're going to gently and slowly begin to arch the lower back. So let's begin to do that now. So you're gently, slowly, only to your range of confidence, you're going to arch the lower back and you'll find that as you do that, the pelvis rolls forward so that there's this anterior tilt of the pelvis. Okay, and then slowly release that. Okay, so now we're going to make sure that we're going to coordinate this movement with the breath. So we're gonna do this many times and we're gonna coordinate it with the breath. So we're going to inhale as we arch the back and roll the pelvis. So inhale. And then as you exhale, slowly release. So notice I'm saying, that we're releasing. So it's a slow controlled release. This is called a pendiculation because it's under load and, but we're lengthening and releasing. So uh, pendiculation is a really uh, valuable insight of Thomas Hanna that we can get, uh, we can really, facilitate very rapidly neuromuscular connections, regaining awareness uh, by utilizing pendiculation as a, as a specific type of movement. So uh, it's the, in particular, it's the slow controlled release where we gain the most uh, awareness. So as you're, so we, now at your own pace, just repeat that this movement many times. So inhaling, you're going to arch the lower back and roll the pelvis and only in your range of comfort and confidence. So never move into pain. And then slowly on the exhalation, you're going to release. So notice, this is very important, that release means you're not countering the movement, intentionally trying to roll the pelvis back or trying to flatten the lower back. Instead, you're aware of the tension and you're slowly releasing that. So it's a very different thing than just mechanically rolling the pelvis. Because we could mechanically roll the pelvis back and forth all day long and get very, very little benefit. But when we slowly release and we're aware of the habits of using counter tension to try to force something back into a, a habitual position, we're able to release that. So when done correctly, you should be noticing significant changes and releases as you do it. So to be clear, it's not something that you need to do a million times in order to notice a, a change. It sh it, when done correctly, the very first time, there's an enormous change. So it's very rapid uh, results when done correctly. So the main focus should be 
on being aware and slowly releasing. Now, as I usually or often point out, there's a lot, there's a, a great deal of uh, energy that gets stored up and that can manifest as emotion, memory, thought, and so forth. So we want to also be aware of all those things and be uh, grateful because as those things as those things pass through our awareness, if we don't grasp at them, but we just allow them, we can have confidence that they are being released. So it's just energy that's been held in these patterns that's being released. So we want to allow that to release. Okay, I'm just gonna check the time, great. So now you can pause when next you are have released the pelvis to neutral and notice now how, what your awareness of the lower back is and how the lower back is in relation to the surface that you're lying on. So you may find uh, that the lower back is more at rest and more in contact with the surface. Now this is unusual for most of us because most of us have chronic tension held in the lower back. So it might seem unusual or even uncomfortable a little bit, but just be aware of that and allow it. It's important though that you don't try to force it. If you for try to force it, it's completely counterproductive. Okay, so now we're going to repeat that movement again, as long as it's comfortable. If it ever becomes uncomfortable, then you just don't do it. But we're going to, if comfortable, we're going to repeat that movement again. So again, coordinated with the breath. So just as we've been doing it, but this time I want you to also be aware of the head, neck, and shoulders. So be aware if you have any uh, habitual tension in those areas and just soften that and allow for the whole body to move in coordination or be moved. Okay, so remember I said, or I pointed out that the pelvis and the spine are connected so that when the pelvis moves, the spine moves. And when the spine moves, the pelvis moves. Well, also the head is connected to the spine so that when the spine moves, the head moves, which means that when the pelvis moves, the head moves. So, or when the spine moves, both the pelvis and the head move. So we want to allow for that natural movement. Most of us are holding a lot of tension in the back of the neck and the shoulders that prevent that free natural movement. But just find out now as you repeat the same movement, but with the awareness of the head, neck, and shoulders, what you discover. So just do that at your own pace. Uh, again, with the inhalation, slowly and gently arching the lower back and tilting the pelvis. So be aware of the head and neck and shoulders. And then on the exhalation, slowly releasing. So allowing for the head to also be moved by that release. And if you have a lot of tension there habitually, this can be a little bit challenging and provoke a lot of feelings. But it is a, 
very wonderful thing. So it's well worth it. Just remember, we don't ever want to be moving into pain, but we're also learning to differentiate between pain and discomfort. So there, we may encounter discomfort, but it's different than pain. And we can moderate that or uh, regulate that because we're in control of how much we're moving. So you can, if you find that the amount of movement you're doing is too provocative, then you just do less. Less is always fine in this. You don't have to make huge movements. You'll get much better results honoring the feedback that you get, that if it's overwhelming, then you do less because that will be less overwhelming. <laughs> and then you'll find that it softens and opens and then the movement can be freer and fuller without it being too provocative. And also, if possible, and I know it's a lot, but if you can also be aware of the, in addition to the head in general, also the face and the jaw and the tongue, that can be very helpful because we often do a lot with our jaws and our tongues and our faces that's unnecessary, that limits our movement and our expression and our happiness and ease. So you can also be aware of that. And then when you're next at completely at rest, then just pause here and again, Notice what has changed. Notice the neck and its relationship to the surface you're lying on. Notice your awareness of the spine, the connection between the pelvis and the head. Notice your breathing, if the breathing is feels more at ease and relaxed. Okay, and then we're gonna do one more thing, which we're gonna just continue to be aware of the whole self as at rest and supported as we can. Be aware of the breathing. And now what we're gonna do is we're maintaining all of that awareness. We're going to um, begin to imagine that uh, our face is like a, <laughs> it might seem like a strange thing, but you want to imagine that your face is like a platter and imagine that it's a, you know, a platter with a bunch of glasses of water on it. So that it needs to remain in this uh, correct alignment, because if we tilt it, then all the water will spill. So we wanna imagine that it's the, the 
face is like this platter and it's just remaining uh, parallel to the ceiling. You don't need to alter the angle of your head, but just imagine that you're gonna maintain the same uh, relationship between the head and the, the face and the ceiling, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and then we're going to begin to imagine that, that as if that platter is going to be lifting up toward the ceiling. So the head in the full expression of this, the head would lift off the floor. Don't try to do that right now, but I'm just giving you the I, the general idea of the what the full expression would be. So the full expression would be, and I'll just, um, I'll demonstrate it for anybody who's not clear. If you understand, you don't need to uh, disturb yourself to look at the screen, but in case you're not clear on it, I'll demonstrate it. So it would be that the head would lift and the face is remaining in the same relationship with the ceiling. So the, the head is not tilting down toward the pelvis. It's just moving directly up to the ceiling and then back down. Okay. So that's, uh, I'm not going to necessarily ask you to make that full movement today because that's the head is very heavy and that's a big movement but instead i want you to just start by imagining that movement so now you have an idea of it and i want you to imagine that movement as you're still aware of your breathing and you're aware of the spine and you're aware of the pelvis so as you're imagining that movement can just start to get a sense of how the whole body is coordinating in order to do that movement. So just imagine and get a sense of how the whole body is involved in that. Not that the whole body is moving in some exaggerated fashion, it's very subtle, but just that you can start to feel the flow of that movement as it it kind of ripples through the whole body. So the whole body is participating. So you see if you can get a sense of that. And can you imagine that as you allow the face to remain relaxed and the tongue and the jaw to remain relaxed and as you're still breathing? And next, now that might be plenty. So if that's plenty, then that's all you do. But next, for those who would like to, what you can do is you can begin on the next exhalation. So you're just following the breath, not forcing anything, but on the next natural exhalation, see if you can allow for everything to remain as supple and relaxed as possible so that you're not suddenly clenching everything. But begin to actually make a micro movement in, in that direction of the head lifting directly up. So only make that movement so much that uh, you can remain aware and relaxed as much as possible. So if you find the shoulders are tensing up or the abdomen becomes really tense or you stop breathing, then do less. But if you make a micro movement, the head's not gonna lift, but you'll maybe just get a sense of a little bit of lightning in the back of the head with the uh, contact with the surface you're on. So just the head seems a little bit lighter on that surface. And then, of course, on the exhalation, you're going to slowly release that micro movement. So here, it's a pandiculation as well on that slow release. That might seem difficult because it's such a, it's a micro movement, but you'll find that you have more sensitivity now. You can actually really allow for this very slow melting
So repeat that several more times if you'd like. And then when you're next, just at rest, then just remain here. And uh, you're welcome. We, you know, we've actually not moved side to side at all. So if you might be helpful just to reawaken that side to side movement, if you want to make some gentle side to side movements with the head and, and legs, feel free to do so. And if not, you don't need to. And I'm going to sit up, but you are welcome to remain where you are if you'd like. So that is the conclusion of our, our meeting today. So take as much time as you'd like to rest. Uh, as long as you don't have to do anything, then um, it's very good to let yourself have a little bit of rest. Uh, you, you know, if you feel like taking a little nap and you have the luxury of being able to do that, that's uh, wonderful. It would be very supportive. We do, uh, you know, there's a, a consolidation process that takes place when we do sleep. It's very helpful. Uh, so an, an enormous part of learning depends upon good rest, uh, which does not mean that you should have the wrong idea that if you cannot take a nap immediately following this, that there won't be any learning, but rather if you have that luxury, it's good. It's a, and you feel like it, it's a very nice thing to offer yourself. And otherwise that when you do sleep later, it will serve the same purpose, but um, be gentle with yourself. And if at all possible, which hopefully it is, be careful as you're transitioning from this, because if you just fling yourself into your next activity, then you'll still have gained a lot from this, but maybe you lose a little bit. You know, it's like you want to get as all soak in all of it. If you just fling yourself kind of mindlessly into the next thing, then maybe. I don't know how to quantify it, but maybe 20% is lost. So be aware in the transition, you know, just if, as you're making the transition, be slow and intentional about it so that you feel what it is and how it is to make the transition. How do you change position? How do you move from lying to sitting? How do you move from sitting to standing or whatever? How do you make this transition from this activity to the next in whatever ways and in all ways, emotionally, mentally, you just start to see it. Do you use momentum? Most of us do. Most of us just fling ourselves at all levels. You see how it happens. You're have a very calm, clear, expanded state of awareness. And then you can allow that 
to spill over and inform the rest of your day, or you can just fling yourself into the contracted mental state, which is what how most of us are accustomed to it. But you have this wonderful opportunity, so don't be uh, extreme about it because that's not needed. But you just take a few minutes just to be gentle and intentional. And then you'll see that there's a spillover effect that's very wonderful that, that you don't have to be practicing in, you know, intensive mindfulness for the rest of the day, but just having that intentionality in the transition will be very helpful. Um, remember to be very gentle with yourself, to nourish yourself, because regardless of what you think, you might think this was very powerful and that would be true, but you might also think oh, it was not, it was, no, I didn't do anything and nothing happened and you would be mistaken. So regardless of what you think, it's very a very powerful practice, it produces a lot of change in the nervous system. And so being gentle with yourself and nourishing yourself at all levels is very, very supportive and helpful and really, in a sense, mandatory because you'll, you'll just feel agitated if you don't. Um, so what does that mean? It means just be gentle with yourself. It just means be patient with yourself. Whatever you're experiencing, you might experience, you might feel like everything's really wonderful and psychedelic, or you might feel like very irritable and frustrated. Anything that, anything, in, you know, all of it could happen. Uh, it really just depends on the conditioning that's in place and what's being released. So um, whatever the case is, just have patience and compassion for yourself if, and, and know that it's part of the healing process. So it's all very good, whatever you think about it. Um, it doesn't, the thinking doesn't make it so. You, you have to just know that it is good and then have this open, compassionate attitude and it will be very good. It'll make it a smoother experience. Um, be sure to nourish yourself with good food, nourishment, whatever that means to you. There's no, you know, oh, there's no one size fits all, but whatever that is for you, whatever you feel good about be good to yourself in that way, uh, be good to your body, whatever that means to you, and um, be good to your senses, you know, just be aware to, you know, what do you want to be taking in, and, and give yourself that, so as I, you know, I sometimes I say, you know, I don't like to give too many rules, but, you know, lay off Facebook and, and the news, because you don't want to be taking that in, so that's part of being gentle with yourself is what are you taking in? What are you taking in through, you know, your, your, your physical nutrition? What are you taking in mentally, sensorily? Be kind and good and gentle to yourself and it will be very supportive. So, um, and lastly, if you have any doubts, concerns or anything, let me know. Uh, you can email me or reach out to me. For those of you who have access to the messenger group, you can contact me that way. But well, anytime you have a doubt or concern that you're not able to resolve on your own, please let me know because that's what I'm here for. Okay, so thank you, everybody. Blessings to you all. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.